Good day, fellow investors. I really enjoyed Buffett's CNBC interview of two hours as Buffett is one of the main characters on this channel. And I thought I'll write a few notes and summarize it in this podcast. So I really hope you enjoy this. Click like if you enjoy, leave, you, leave a review if leave you leave a review if you're listening this on any podcast available out there so on the content i want to discuss what it is all about when it comes to buffett about his views on the coronavirus interest rates berkshire stock and uh, portfolio management let's start so the first interesting thing is this craziness that is unfortunately probably a necessity with media. So Buffett keeps talking about long term, about where the business is, America will be in 10, 20, 30 years. And what does the news do? They keep showing these changes in prices day by day, day by day. Down is down. The Dow is down 10,000 million points this morning. This happened. This is up 2%. This is up 1%. And it's crazy how during the whole two hours, it's up to you what you are focused on. But unfortunately, I feel that many are really focused on these changes in stock prices, changes in oil prices, changes in whatever exactly doesn't matter according to Buffett. So let's start immediately going into the content, how investing is about businesses, about investing in businesses, forgetting about the markets and simply allowing for compounding. As would Buffett say, we get rich on the earnings and the new earnings from the retained earnings. So when a company and Buffett owns companies that reinvest those earnings at the 20% return on equity, on tangible equity, and that's how he gets rich, rich. That's how the compounding is allowed. And that's all what you have to do. Invest, reinvest earnings, allow, allow for compounding at the highest possible return on equity rates. Now, on markets, it's very simple. You can't predict the market and you certainly can't predict the market by reading the daily newspaper. The only question you have to ask yourself before buying something is, are you making an intelligent purchase in relation to your financial goals? I would add. So you look at something, okay, what is the price earnings ratio? What is the growth? What is the moat? What is the likelihood that this business will still be there in 10, 15 years? Will it be bigger? Does it have retained earnings to reinvest? And then you think, okay, am I making an intelligent per per purchase for myself? That's all you have to ask yourself when it comes to investing. Now we see so much panic, but in the last 10 years, it has all, all been about stocks going up, growth, chasing whatever was the hot stock at the moment. But when it comes to investing, whether you are making an intelligent purchase or not, depends on the price in relation to what is offered. So as Buffett always says, discount the current and future earnings to the present day. And then you see, according to your discount rate, what is your what is the price, whether something is undervalued or overvalued, whether something is undervalued or overvalued depends on you. On bonds versus stocks, very simple, 2% treasury with fixed earnings while stocks will always keep growing their earnings because that's the nature of businesses. They can increase prices alongside inflation, something that the treasury can't do. And on trouble on the markets, trouble is always coming, but buy stocks if you get enough for your money. That's again related to price. On the coronavirus, it makes no difference to his investments. 80% invested he is. News are mostly bad all the time. In 10 years, the economy will be better than it is now. On Apple, his biggest position, it really suffered due to the coronavirus up till Monday, but now I see a rebound, especially as I'm filming this. But still very interesting to see how the markets think only one way. It's either exuberance or panic. However, if you're an investor like Buffett, you know that in 10 years, Apple probably will be a better business than it is now. New products, who knows, but high cash flows probably. And that's what Buffett is investing. Very simple. 
he has no idea how businesses will be affected over the next six months, year, but 10, 20 years from now, businesses will be doing great. On the question whether supply chain issues will be, will be detrimental to the economy, he simply again responds long-term, long-term, long-term. Where will it be all in 10 years? He discussed it with Bill Gates. He's bullish on the long-term outlook for prevention. So now could be the chance to get businesses cheaper. So we might see a lot of panic, but it's likely that later, longer term, we will learn how to deal with this as humani humanity has always learned how to deal with issues. That's one of the best things about humans. We are resourceful and we find a way to get out of trouble. Sometimes we make it our own, but that's a different story. This is very interesting. Everybody says that Warren Buffett bought the airlines, all four big American airlines, and I recently made a video about them. However, he said three positions are mine and one isn't. One is from the others. So it's very likely that American Airlines is not his position because of the debt. The free stocks are all similar with lower debt levels, but American Airlines is something he probably didn't buy. The other guys that work for him bought it. Very, very interesting. Again, the same answer on the coronavirus 10 years from now, more passengers, good margins for, again, competitors. On zero interest rates and banks, don't go for the yield, live, learn to live with 1% is his message. So more risk taking place to chase yield, which is stupid. And that's bad for savers and pension funds, but good for the government. On the long term, it's hard to believe again, another 10 years from now to still have negative interest rates. However, it's very easy to borrow and he is simply prepared for anything. There are 14 trillion negative rate that Greece needs to pay only 1% on the 10 year Greek bond, which is insane. Federal deficits are piling. Nobody is concerned. What world comes out from this? Buffett doesn't know. And he is always, as always, ready for anything with his 120 billion in cash. It makes absolutely no sense to lend at 1.4% when it's government policy to have 2% inflation. On Berkshire, whether it is a holding company, well, he says index funds are also holding companies and those don't get discounted. So no reason to discount Berkshire. Whether Berkshire, if split up, should be higher value? Well, yes, if you do it in the short term and if you use a lot of leverage, however, you have to pay a lot of taxes if, taxes if you do that and they will not risk anything just to leverage themselves to the sky like many others are doing thanks to the Wall Street super salesman. On beating the S&P 500, he says very, very intelligently that investing is about the risk and reward. You have to compare Berkshire, not just from the reward, everybody's talking about he didn't beat the S&P, he didn't beat the S&P, he didn't beat the S&P. Well, he says, it's about risk and reward. He says they will not be in the top 10 performances of stocks for uh, the S&P 500, but they will certainly be in the lowest risk decile. And on balance, Berkshire will do a little better than the S&P 500, depends on the market. So five to 8% is my assumption. Five to 8% is a big difference, not just a little bit better. So. Warren Buffett still thinks Berkshire will beat the S&P 500. He is 80% in equities, 20% in cash. If interest rates stay, stay low, he will wish, he wishes to be 125% in equities, but that's something you can never know. And he is therefore prepared for anything. On ETF purchases for Berkshire, he says it's probably some pension fund in some company that acquired that without his knowledge. So it's not Buffett, it's not actual Berkshire, but a subsidiary somewhere that gets consoli consolidated. Also Kroger is not a Buffett purchase. Very interesting to see the separation among what he is buying and what others that are working for him are 
buying. On portfolio management, something very curious here is something you learn over decades is not something you have to sit day by day. And he says that uh, there were periods of five to 10 years where the best thing he could do was to do nothing. He traded, he sold Disney and things like this, that, but the best things would have been to do nothing. And that's something you learn over years, how to manage a portfolio. You don't have to watch a portfolio day by day. So to conclude, when people panic, everything freezes, but focus on Warren Buffett and not on all those numbers going up and down. I know it's hard, but that's the core of long-term investing. And if you're a long-term investor, as always, subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell so that you get notified when a new video comes out. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.